smothering reptile. Brian, I did not expect that to stay still as long as it did. Yeah. That is amazing. That lizard dashed across the road and then promptly stayed completely still. And look at the way that it's using the camouflage to pretend that it's basically a stick. It's amazing. Look how close it's letting me get. The first time I've ever actually had this opportunity. Oh. Uh, slightly, slightly overestimated its level of obligingness. I don't know where it went. Oh, it's here. Brian, it's just here. Still, it's frozen again, but just slightly to the side of where it was. Can you sort of, can you see it there? There we go, well done. There we go. That's truly phenomenal. That very seldom happens. Bushwalk, of course, gives us this opportunity because these are the sorts of things that when you're driving around in a vehicle, there is absolutely no way you're going to spot. Now, you'll see them running across the road, but once they're gone, they're gone, and you kind of dismiss it. But on foot, you get to enjoy these special moments. I wonder how long it would take for us if we just sat here for it to get used to our presence and start to behave as it would as if we weren't here. By the way, just on the subject of what Tristan was saying, that 30 seconds loss was hilarious. It was very funny, wasn't it, Brian? Yeah. 30 seconds, for those of you that are unfamiliar, is articulate, for those of you in the UK. It's basically the same board game. Perfectly, perfectly still. I don't actually want to get any closer. I'm going to peep, peep over Brian's shoulder so I can see what you're seeing. Its colors are astounding. You don't realize the intricacy of the patterns on the scales. Now, looking at reptiles, Rebecca, you want to know what kind of snakes are the most common on this reserve. Hmm, what did I say the most common snake is out here? Probably bush snakes, probably a variated bush snake. Those are beautiful snakes. They often get mistaken for a boom slung. They are not boom slungs. They're completely harmless, but it's a very common bright green snake with black dots on it. Black mummers are actually quite common as well. We see them relatively regularly. Fortunately for us, and despite their reputation, they're actually quite nervous snakes, so they're usually moving away from us. We see black mummers quite regularly. I, I want to say puff adders, just because typically puff adders are very, very common, but I haven't seen that many puff adders out here. How many puff adders have you seen, Bebop? Mm, I don't think any. Maybe don't think one. any. Yeah. Mm. We had one at the beginning of the TV show series when we were driving around in the rain. It's only one. It's only one. And that's, that's pretty much it. And typically, puff adders are quite common. They're usually a snake that you see quite regularly because they're quite slow and quite, I don't want to call them lazy, but they're reluctant to move. They, they call it, what did Steph call it? The three bite snake. No, it was Brent. The three, bites, the, th the three bite snake. If you're the third person in line, you might get bitten by it just because they are so reluctant to move. Interestingly enough, studies have shown recently that puff adders actively hunt. We just don't, we didn't necessarily interpret their behavior that way. So they use their tongue as, as a lure. And a burrowing asp slide past the cars the other day. What else do we get regularly? A shield cobra was our special sighting. That's very unusual. What other snakes have we had? Spitting cobras and snouted cobras are quite common, especially around houses, because they like to, obviously, houses, food, rodents, snakes. So it's quite common to get them around there. What other snakes have we had in camp? We had that beautiful East African shovel-nosed snake. That was the one that resulted in Connor launching himself 
launching himself backwards away from the fire the one day. It was beautifully executed and highly entertaining to watch. What other snakes have we had? Red-lipped herald, we've had quite a few of as well in the bathrooms. And the other ones we've caught. I feel like I'm missing one very obvious species. We hardly ever see pythons. Ah, Lou wants to know what was the, the snake that gave, me, that gave Brent a fright. Let me tell you something, it gave me more of a fright. Um, I was having a nap and apparently a snake was crawling into bed with me and Brent went to lie down and discovered the snake next to my head. Fortunately, he came to my rescue by leaping to the other side of the room and shouting obscenities at it. It's a lovely way to wake up. Very entertaining. Nothing like waking up eye to eye with a snake. It was, uh, that was a bush snake. Brent keeps saying it's a sand snake. It wasn't a sand snake, it was a bush snake. It was a variegated bush snake. Brent disagrees though. Neither of us had actually seen it properly, which resulted in us sunglasses on, standing on the bed with a broom, trying to get our shoes out of the way from underneath a shelf so that we could try and work out what it was. Ideally, we didn't really want to go sticking our hand in there until we discovered exactly what it was. And of course the sunglasses, because of spitting cobras, there was, we had seen a spitting cobra in the house not too long before that. So we were desperate to avoid the cytotoxic venom being sprayed in our eyes. Nobody really wants that, do they, Brian? No. no. Not a good time. Not a good time.